our feet. The word of God says in Psalm 103, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. What has he done for you today? As you worship him today, I want us to focus on all the benefits we have. Oh, Jesus Christ our Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's lift our voices to him. Lord, we thank you that we can enter into your courts with thanksgiving in our hearts and into your gates with praise. Let us forget about ourselves and concentrate on you. We thank you for those who are still on their way. We thank you that we have the freedom to worship you today. We thank you for all that you're about to do among us today. Lord, we thank you that we came to your house to experience your presence. And there's nothing better than the presence of the Lord. There's fullness in your presence. So we rejoice in you today, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We give you all the glory, all the power, all the praise, because you are worthy of it all. In Jesus' name, let's worship.
by the centuries of life will not get you through by the Hebrew. Jesus Christ will get you through it. So come and worship me and come to that church. We come to church and experience with the Almighty God. Don't ever come to church the same way. Go home the same way you can. Be taught to renew. Hallelujah. And so whatever you want to do, you want to, you want to dance, you want to lift your hands, whatever you do, but one thing I ask of you is that you will worship. You will worship God the way He wants to be worshipped by you.
new communion, new fellowship, you stand in union with Jesus Christ, and you become one with him, and you can receive all that he died for you to receive, like healing for your body, provision for your needs, anything that you need today, as this bread touches your lips, you can have it, you can have all that he died for us to have in Jesus' name, so let's lift it to him, let's break it, like the body was broken, we have to remember that he was broken, he was broken, he suffered, he, he bled in seven different places, so last week we said that he was bleeding as he was praying in the garden of Gethsemane, he was saying, not my will, but yours be done, and we were saying that that was for our, your will be done in my life, so that we can have our will be broken, so that we can live according to his will, so today you should lift this bread to him, and bless him, ask him whatever you need, and as it touches your mouth, believe that you have received it, in the Jesus, Jesus, we thank you for your body that was broken. Jesus, we thank you that you suffered and died, that you, that you were buried and you risen again, that you died and you were buried and you rose again for me, that you died and you were buried and rose again so we could have a life forevermore, life in abundance. Lord, I thank you so much as we take this, that healing will take place. Brokenness, Lord, will be healed. Whatever the need is, chains will be broken. Thank you, Jesus. And today we have this in your name because of what you did for us in the cross. So we receive this by faith. Church, let's receive it together.
understand the power of God. It breaks every yoke. It makes things happen. It makes things happen. You have control over you can explain it. Praise Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to welcome you now to the Lord today. And I know God is shifting us into the next level. And you know I'm not a person that just says things to say things. I mean it. God is moving us to another level. Are you ready? Susan, don't go too far. What is coming to your life is that I would tell you about it, you would not believe it. Because God is glorifying Himself in the last days through His body, the church. And so I want to encourage you, don't start worshiping on Sunday. It's too late to worship Sunday. Worship throughout the week. Worship is what moves God's heart. Worship is what He desires. God loves worship. He says, we're two or three come together, my name. He's going to show up. Amen. And when He shows up, there's no demon or devil, no hell that can stop Him. Can't stop you from worshiping Him. Nothing can stop a child of God to worship God. No government, no rules, no regulations, no laws. Our commitment to God is planted in our hearts. I don't know what you carry in your life. I don't know what's going on in your life. But He knows. And one thing I know, I can't present you before God because I present you before God. Things will change your life. There's a presence in this place. The presence of God is here. Open up your heart and stop it. Sometimes we come together on Sunday and we just want to rush into the presence of God. Real quick. Get out of touch and go home. Get to how the Holy Spirit works. How many times the church brings the Holy Spirit? He wants to move, but people have a agenda in the church. They want to rush out. When the Holy Spirit is present, it touches our life. It will no longer be the same. Your tomorrow will not be the same like today if the Holy Spirit touches your life. And that's what He wants. We have best of His glory. What is amazing is that we come into the Holy of Holies, that we can approach God, we can go straight in the throne room of God. Nobody's going to stop us. We don't need any priests. We don't need any pastors. We don't need anybody to go with us in the presence of God. You can't get into the presence of God. And when you get into the presence of God, it's the fullness of His presence that will take your life. And when He overtakes your life, everything on earth becomes unimportant. It doesn't matter anymore. Give me a new focus, a new agenda. You know, most people, when they live their life to it, they get hurt. Most Christians, when they live their life on earth, then one day they go to be, be with the Lord. They look back and say, What a mess I have done in my life, with my life. Because they see what God will do to their life. You're a mess. This cup, this bottle is a vessel, amen. I don't ask this bottle what it tells me to do. I tell the bottle what, it will, what I want to tell the bottle, amen. I tell the bottle you be full with water. You be ready when I want you. The bottle sits here and it doesn't move until I pick it up. That's, that's what we are, our vessel of the Holy Spirit. We sit there in His presence. 
and leave them for his presence. And God, I want more of you. I don't want to be what it was yesterday. I don't want to be tomorrow what I'm today. I want to be transformed by the transforming power of your presence, Holy Spirit. I need you more today than yesterday. If you're longing, even this time, the Holy Spirit will show up and fellowship with you. And when he fellowships with you, you're in intimate relation with the Father. He speaks through you to the Father. And that's why we come here. We come here to make experience with God. I don't ever want to go to church and sing a couple songs, go to motion, go home and say, that's church. That's not church. That's a religious tradition. We come here to open up our hearts, our lives, the Holy Spirit can impart greatness of His presence in our lives. And He knows exactly what you need. You need something else than what I need. I need something else what you need. But praise God, He is the one. He's the one that's fine detail and fine truth to every individual's life. And I know that, I know it just before a breakthrough. There's a breakthrough. I've experienced many times the glory of God's coming down, hovering over, the, hovering over the ceiling, and when the church gets in the right motion, it just breaks. But if the church is not ready, just like a sneeze or something, a, a distraction, then the glory of God just goes away. I feel the glory. I see the glory of God just hovering over here. Are you ready to receive? Are you ready to receive the glory of God? I want you to receive the glory of God. I beg you to open up your hearts. Raise the voice of the Lord. Speak to Him. Speak to Him. Let Him know how much you love Him. Just open your mouth and let something come out. Hallelujah. If you don't know what to say, say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah is the highest praise. That's the way of praise that you can also to God. But hallelujah. You can say, Thank you. There's something, something in you that can come out. Worthy of the Lamb. God makes it sensible. God wants to hear your voice. Sometimes God waits all week long for someone to speak to Him. Because we're so busy of being busy with nothing. It turned is too long. How do we go? Oh God, we worship you. We worship you, Lord. We worship you. We come before you.
people shall walk on a new path. Your people will enter doors that never have been able to enter in before. And everyone that's present in this place, everyone that hears my voice, I thank you, Father, for the anointing power that you release on every life today. Life will never be the same. Something has been birthed. Something has been activated. Something has been set on fire. And we thank you for it. We give you glory, praise, and honor in the majestic name of the Son of Jesus Christ. In his name we dwell. In his name we move. In his name we are a being. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Holy. In 
the relationship that's pleased with Holly. If I cook, I will give my life for you. For you to end the glory of God. The manifestation of God's glory is at hand. With the threshold.
Do you know when people stand before hell, enter hell, no more way to return? Do you think they would have a problem of jumping if they could know they could make it to the other side of glory? You think when people stand at the door of hell, they would have a problem dancing if they could make it to the other side of glory? We are on earth. And how I ask you to start worshiping God in the great dimension. Take time out. Take time out. Whatever you do here on earth, the kingdom of God, you have a heavenly account over glory. And you're only going to withdraw for what you put in the glory. When you go to life situation, you don't know how to master life, you don't know what to do with life. You have to have something in your heavenly bank account to withdraw. And that withdrawing comes from worshiping. Amen. God has the interest in his people worshiping him. The devil really doesn't care if you come to church. The devil doesn't really care if you sing songs. The devil really doesn't care if you pray. The devil really doesn't care if you call yourself a Christian. What the devil hates is consistency in a Christian. When everything breaks loose in their life, and it's to worship God. When things not go, go out right in life, it's to worship God. That's what the devil hates, consistency, amen. And you have the power to walk in the consistency of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not by God because of your power, it's because it's power in you. Hallelujah. There's Holy Ghost power in you. And the demonstration of its power is everlasting. Hallelujah. Now I told you so many subjects. If you agree, say hallelujah. For today I receive it. Amen. It's by the power of your word that you receive. Is, is God good? Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, we need to acknowledge. If you need something today, Whatever in you, you may need, you may need healing, you may need a deliverance, you may need a breakthrough, you may need something from God. You're not going to get it until you acknowledge it. You say, God, the healing is mine. If everything God has done, it's already completed. Amen. I said, I, two Sundays ago, I think the worst prayer is because you can pray, you can pray for it. Lord, heal my body. Oh, heal this. For what? God says, what is wrong with you? You my child are entitled because I have given you a covenant relation with the son of my son, Lord Jesus Christ. You just have to ask for healing. The healing is yours. I say, I receive the healing. I receive my breakthrough. I receive my miracle. Hallelujah. And because you receive it, because you speak it, it's going to be activated. You have the power in your tongue. The Bible says you have the power in your tongue to bless or to curse. To tear down and to build up. And the Lord is telling us today, He wants all of us to get into a breakthrough living. Amen. Can we break? Can you get some of your notes on the screen? Breakthrough living. Hallelujah. Do you just want to have a living? Or do you want to have a breakthrough living? Do you just want to I just need to get time here. Oh. Okay, we're just going to get started and then we're going to begin next Sunday. Break for living. Amen. We get to the title of the message. God wants you to just don't live a life. He wants to have a life of breakthrough. Amen. Sometimes we don't understand what a breakthrough is. We all encountered the storm the last couple this week. We encounter a storm, and you think there's storms that, oh, let me be gentle with the neighborhood. Let me be gentle with the trees. Let me be gentle with the homes, because people will lose the power from Tuesday to Friday night. Oh, let me be gentle. No, the wind didn't care. The wind was an assignment, and he said, I'm going to break through the neighborhood. I'm going to make happen what no other people can make happen. And I saw a tree, a big tree, bigger than a house, just uprooted. The root just came up like this, stand like this, and the house was the, the tree was leaning on the house. Breakthrough living is 
is not your normal living. Breaking living is not what you can accomplish or you can do. Breaking living is inspired by the power of the Holy Spirit. And how many times he wants you to enjoy breaking living? Every day he wants you to start a fresh breakthrough. Because yesterday's breakthrough is not good enough for today. Today's breakthrough is not good enough for tomorrow. In other words, when you have a breakthrough, you may have a breakthrough the problem in life, but that breakthrough for that problem is not the best breakthrough for the rest of the life. Amen? Because the problem is at that time, at that point in life, and the breakthrough comes to the problem and solves the problem, but the breakthrough that you receive with the problem was just the problem. So God wants us to live every day a life of breaking through. In the Old Testament, it talks about about Patterson. And about Patterson is the same way. In other words, we can show you a little picture. If you go up to Niagara Falls, you see the billions of gallons of water coming over the fall, and you just stand and say, I'm going to hold all the water back. No water will come down as I lift my hands up. Is that possible? No. Because the breakthrough, the water will come down on you and just play a game with you. And that's what God wants to do. He wants to give us a breakthrough. He doesn't want us to live our normal life anymore. That normal life is over. Hallelujah. He wants us to shift in the breakthrough. That wherever we go, it's a breakthrough. That we have breakthrough through transmitters. That we give have a problem. You know, you have the power. God has given you the power to move and shape this world for Jesus Christ. But you can't shake the world of Jesus Christ if you sit at home and watch TV. Amen. You can't watch the, the power of God be manifest in you if you don't expose yourself to people that need the power of God in you. Again, the vessel, right? God wants to take you and pour you over people's life. God wants to take you and give some thirsty person a fresh strength. God wants, God, Isaiah 61 verse 1 says, God has anointed you. He's anointed you. Are you really walking in the anointing? Are you really walking in the manifestation? Are you really walking in the breakthrough that God has intended for you to break in a breakthrough and walk with it? Now I'm going to finish with this verse today. Philippians 4.13 the easiest way to remember Philippians 4.13 is a 10 figure prayer. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. What can you do? Something? Oh. Sometimes? Oh. Occasionally? Oh. Only when the sun shines? Only when you power the house? No. It says, I can. Hallelujah. Can you say, I can? I can do all things. Hallelujah. I have no limits in Christ Jesus. You have no limits in Christ Jesus. I can do all things through Christ. It's not because of who I am. It's because Christ in me is the fullness of His glory. He's the fullness of His power. Hallelujah. There's nothing He can do. There's nothing He can do to overcome because the power of the Holy Ghost is in you. I can. How many times people find a situation like the other situation come over their life and push it down and push it down and push it down and push it down. All of a sudden they have no interest in anyone's life. They want to they want to die. They want to commit suicide. They want to they want to go the wrong directions and say, I'm done with serving Jesus. I was fed off the word. I'm done with giving my life to the Lord. See, I live my life to the Lord. Look what happens. Do you know that unbelievers have the same issues? The unbelievers have problems too. But I already go through a problem. I already go through a crisis where my Lord Jesus tells me I can do all things. Hallelujah. I can do all things with Jesus Christ. All we need is Jesus. Why can't you go through? Because He strengthens me. He strengthens you. That reminds me in the Old Testament. When Moses was fighting a battle, and when he got tired, his hands came down. And every time his hands came down, his arms came down, the enemy won the battle. 
But Jesus showed up. Hallelujah. Jesus showed up and said, Moses, get to me to your left and to your right. Let him lift up your hand. Aaron, lift up my hand. Her, lift up my hand. So Moses was standing. And he was saying, yes, Lord Jesus. We can do it. Hallelujah. There's power in your name. Jehovah God Almighty. We can do it. And they overcame the enemy. But how much more power do we have today? How much more of a better life do we have today? Because Jesus Christ came to this world. Because he came to this world, he gave us everything that we need. Everything. And so I want you to memorize this verse. That's homework for this week. You never get homework. You never get homework in church? No. But this week you have a homework. Remember, right? Philippians 4.13. I can do all things that Jesus Christ has written me, amen. And every time you have a problem in life, you take the word of God as no problem. Whole sickness I come against you with the word of God. The Bible says it's going to be. The Bible says it's mine. The Bible says I can do all things. And that's when the problem stops, amen. That's when you see this busy body because the sickness can stand in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Let us stand. And if we are the next part of the sermon, we can come back next Sunday. Amen. And maybe the next Sunday. But what I want you to focus on, I really want you to focus on the Lord. Really spend time with Him. You know, my house is busy. So I'm learning. If I get up early in the morning when everybody's still asleep, I find my time with the Lord. If I miss that window, I wouldn't find time the way I would spend, spend with the Lord. So I want, I want to ask you, find a window that's good for you. Either in the morning, some people at night, night out, they want to listen to one o'clock in the morning. Whatever the window is, there's no right or wrong. Some people say, well, you have to get, get started in the morning when you get up with the Lord. Well, if you start at 12.30 or after midnight, that's morning, amen. It's just finding a window. Because I know in church, God is, God is really shaking me. God is shaking the church. And I made up my mind, whatever God wants us to become, we become. I want you to run the race with us. Because when we, see, when you look, when you look, when you're in the race, you have no time to stop and take up people. You have time to drag them along. But at a certain time, you have to start running. God will manifest itself as church. And all the believers, all the ones that are true Christians. So we, can, we want to come before God today. And just thank Him for His goodness. God has a wonderful plan for your life. God, you know, God wrote up, wrote up your life before the foundation of the world, the Bible says. He made a path, a blueprint before you, before you ever stepped in this world. He has a wonderful plan for your life. Now I want to ask you a quick but very important question. If you should die this very second, do you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you will be in heaven? Do you know for sure? That if, you, if, if, the, if this is your last breath, you breath in the next second, will you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you're going to be in heaven? That's a serious, serious question. That's a serious question, but it's good news, it's a serious question. You know, the Bible says that all have fallen short, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Everybody. Even Jesus was separated from his father because of our sins. He did not sin, but our sins separated Jesus from the presence of God on the cross. Because Jesus, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And the wage of sin is that we're all supposed to go to hell. Some people tell you, go to hell. If people tell you, go to hell, you tell them, look, I've got good news for you. Let's go together to heaven. But the good news is that Jesus Christ is, that whoever calls on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. 
Amen. Ain't good whosoever, amen. All we, we are all the whosoever. Praise God. Jesus always has a way. He is always has a way. He always has a way. So I want you to repeat that to me. If you want to see Christ as your Lord and Savior, repeat that to me if you want to have the free gift that Jesus has for you. Dear Lord Jesus, we come before you just the way we are. And we know we're sinners. And that is why we ask you to cleanse us with your precious blood. Wash me. Cleanse me. Make me whole. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Give me the boldness to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let me be a witness wherever I go. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying on the cross for me. Thank you that you're coming back for me. And I receive this wonderful gift. And you, I want you to be the Lord of my life. And I will live my life for you from this day forward. In the name of Jesus, I receive it. Now thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. May His face shine on you. Be gracious to you. You're going to have an awesome tomorrow. Monday's going to be awesome. Amen. Well, Sunday's going to be awesome. Monday's going to be awesome. Monday, amen. Tuesday will be even better than Monday. Wednesday will be greater than Tuesday. And Thursday will be even better than Wednesday. And Friday will be super seen all over the world. Hey, Saturday, 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 Saturday